Oh, yay, oh, yay, oh, yay. Bluford versus Arkansas is a bizarre case, which is going to be argued before the United States Supreme Court on Wednesday, February 22nd, uh, 2012. It involves a defendant in Arkansas who was on trial in part for capital murder and a number of other lesser included offenses in connection with the killing of a baby. Um, after some period of time, the jury was brought into the, into the courtroom by the judge and asked whether they were able to reach a verdict on any or all of the decisions. Uh, the jury had what was called transitional uh, instructions. In other words, they were told that they should start with the most serious offense first, which was capital murder, and gradually work their way down. If they, if they came to a conclusion with respect to capital, uh, then they should go to the next lower case, the next lower, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the jury was brought into the courtroom, and they were asked whether they had reached any verdicts. Uh, they said they were deadlocked. Uh, the judge then did a bizarre thing and inquired what the numbers were. Uh, the judge then specifically asked them with respect to each one of the charges uh, what their conclusions were. And the jury orally, that is the jury foreperson with all jurors in the room, orally said they found the defendant not guilty of the capital murder. They found the defendant not guilty of what was the next lower offense of, of murder. Um, they were unable to reach a decision with respect to the two remaining counts. Uh, after the judge gave them the Allen charge, or the so-called dynamite charge, telling them to go back and deliberate, they were brought back into the courtroom a short time later, still unable to come to a conclusion with respect to the two least serious offenses, uh, but still said that they had come to the conclusion the defendant was not guilty of capital murder, not guilty of the uh, next serious murder. Um, the case was then granted a mistrial, that is, the defendant was granted a mistrial uh, without objection, um, and the case was set down for retrial. The defendant took an interlocutory appeal to the, Ill uh, to the Arkansas <laughs> Supreme Court um, arguing that double jeopardy would bar any type of retrial. And the Arkansas Supreme Court came to the conclusion that because there had been a mistrial declared, double jeopardy did not bar retrial, and he could be retried on all four counts, that is, the ones on which the jury had said he was not guilty, as well as the ones on which they were hung. Uh, the decision before the United States Supreme Court, or decisions before the United States Supreme Court, uh, really, really involve a couple of decisions. First of all, uh, when the jury announced in open court that Mr. Bluford was not guilty of the offense of first-degree murder and not guilty of the offense of capital murder, uh, was that considered a verdict which should bar retrial? Uh, obviously, if it is a verdict which was reached by the jury, then the double jeopardy clause should bar retrial and Mr. Bluford should not be able to be retried on those cases. Uh, one of the issues that the Supreme Court is going to have to decide, essentially, is when is a verdict a verdict? Uh, there was no writing of the verdict. There was no entering of the verdict. Uh, however, the jury foreperson with all of the jurors in the courtroom clearly and unequivocally stated that he was not guilty of those two offenses. Um, my suspicion, my expectation is that the United States Supreme Court will say, given the fact that all jurors were in the courtroom, given the fact that the jury was clear, given the fact that the jury foreperson indicated it was a unanimous decision and nobody dissented, that Mr. Bluford should be found acquitted of those two most serious offenses and that the double jeopardy, charge, double jeopardy clause of the Fifth Amendment uh, would bar retrial. Uh, conceivably, however, the court could come to the conclusion that a verdict is not a verdict until it's actually returned in writing. Uh, and if they do that, then Mr. Bluford is going to be able to be retried. Uh, the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers uh, and a number of other organizations filed, filed amicus briefs in front of the United States Supreme Court, uh, arguing essentially uh, that you can't bog down uh, courtroom procedures and that mere courtroom procedures don't trump uh, the double jeopardy clause of the Fifth Amendment, and under those circumstances that Mr. Bluford should be not be able to be retried because he was acquitted.